This is the 41st lesson of the Bible. Today we're going to look at Tissendorf. In 1844, he discovered, dated around a mid 4th century, the Codex Senecatus. Senecatus. My tongue can't speak today. After the St. Catherine's Monastery. So Codex Syndicatus comes from a monastery. And you're going to find some other interesting facts here. It doesn't come from Antioch. It is bound and determined by a Catholic. Mount Sinai. That's where the law came from. That's where God gave the law to Moses. We're not under the law. This is where Tissendorf discovered the Codex Sinicatus. Tissendorf saw some leaves of a parchment in a waste paper basket. This is your good, your good codex. Found in the garbage can. This is just as bad as Codex Vaticanus. Where your modern Bibles come from. We're not talking about the family tree of the King James Bible. We're talking about your modern Bibles. And one of the roots comes from a garbage can. From a monastery. St. Catherine. You can't find Catherine anywhere in the Bible. At least I can find James in the Bible, and James in the Hebrew is also Jacob. He retrieved from a basket 129 leaves or pages in the early Greek unical masculine hand, which he identified as coming from a manuscript of the Septuagint, you know, the XXX. The Septuagint. I mean, LXX, which is garbage, like where this was found. According to his account, the monks, monks, that's a Catholic, that's, a, that's an Eastern religion. You know what they call them in evolution? The monkeys. Indicate that they had already used a number of similar leaves to stroke their fires. So some of the, the, the leaves, some of the pages of the Codex Syndicatus was already thrown into the fire. It's too bad it wasn't all thrown in the fire. So you see where I tell you your modern Bibles burn them? There was a reason. There was a purpose. And it took you 41 lessons to get to the purpose. To the monks, the manuscripts were not valuable. And to me either. <laughs> Any valuable at all. It don't help. Some of them, we make things nice and clear and understand. Some of them make it even worse. And they consider a waste. It was like the old newspaper. Eh, okay, we read it. Throw it in the garbage. Wrap it in fish. The Greek Old Testament... Alexandria, origin, the West. That's the wrong person. That's the wrong, I mean, that's the wrong place. That's the wrong person. And that's the wrong direction. You want Antioch. And you want the East. And there's a long name. Revived or resurrection of origins work. Remember, he, he corrupted it. Monks let him take 43 leaves. It was 129. He published these leaves 1846, 1846. Codex Heretical Augustinus, a name given to honor of his patron, or patron, 
Frederick Augustus II of Saxony, the King of Saxony. The fragments were published in 1846, although Tissendor kept the place of discovery a secret. There's nothing in the Bible secret. Where'd your Bible come from? It, it came from the authority of King James. It came from an old wine press, the very first press. It came from the mouth and the writings of the apostles and the prophets. He was the founder of Tissentor's trip. In 1853, Tissendorf made a second trip to Syria Monastery, but had made no new discoveries. Why? Because he had opened the door to Alexandria, and God says, okay, that's a door of fire. I'm not going to give you anything else. He returned a third time in January 1859 under the pat patronage of Tsar, ruler, Alexander II, look at the name Alexander keeps coming up, of Russia, with an active aid of the Russian government to find more of the Codex Federico Augustinus, or similar ancient biblical text. So now here comes Russia, the atheistic nation. Let's find more. Why? So they can destroy it. I wish they got a hold of all this. And I wish they had destroyed it. Shows Satan protects his work too. On the February 4th, the last day of his visit, he was shown a text which he recognized as significant, the Codex Sanicatus, a Greek manuscript of complete New Testament and parts of the Old Testament dating to the 4th century. Tissentor persuaded the monks to present the manuscript to Tsar Alexander II of Russia. At the cost of the Tsar, it was published in 1862. He had 40 manuscripts to the thousands of the King James Version translators. Tissentor had the 40, the King James had thousands. He would put a note where he conflicted with the KJV. I, uh, the KJV, that's wrong there. Oh, the KJV shouldn't have said that. You know, pastors say that at the pulpit. There's a better rendering in the Greek, the originals. That's a footnote. <laughs> that's what he did. The authorized version is to be questioned here because of the codex given a name. The key James wrong here, but it's codex blank, blank, blank. So he's against the King James. I'm against him. One manuscript says this, and 2,300 say it should be. The scholars, along with Tizendorf, went to the one over 2,300. Now, there are places you find about in the original, you would not find this text. Most ancient texts do not have, there's not a proper authority for what this text, and then you go look it up, you find out, yes, it was there the whole time, they're just lying to you. You got to do some digging. You see, you know, it comes to the, the, the pastor of a church, and or the congregation, they're too lazy to study. You tell them I said that. There's a three-point system. Number one, naturalistic. The Bible Greek text was no different from other literature. No inspiration of, of Scripture by God from men that believed in God. The Bible had no great value over me, other men's work. I mean, Shakespeare is just as good. And whatever pornography that the Romans and the Greeks had, that's just as good. And whatever their 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 cashier stand of, of new, newspapers and magazines while you're checking out at their store, that's just as good. 
the, the, their writings, man, what man wrote, there's no better, no worse than God, what God wrote. I read the Bible, but I put, I read more, you know, my fishing magazine or the television magazine or the other crap that people read. Number two, the oldest manuscripts are simply the best. Senecatus, since they are older, fine wine is great with age. So, if older is the better, let, let, let's... Let's say they, they, they go into Egypt and they find naked pictures of Cleopatra. Well, that's going to be the great over today's pornography. Because it's old. You find somewhere in Nineveh, you find a chalkboard kind of thing where it's been written, I will not, I will, and you know, it's been broken off of this fragment. But well, that boy or that girl had to write something X amount of time. But that's just as good because it's old. You know what happens to old newspapers? It gets yellow, it gets brittle, it gets broken. The newer best condition were better than the old falling apart edition, while the best condition was not was not or the fewest uses. So they say the older is the best. And when you're referenced to the Bible, the, the Senecatus, and I'm saying it wrong, I apologize, and the Vaticanus, they're the oldest, so they're not. They're the best. And compared to the Bible versions, the King James Version is older than them, Now they switch gears while going down the highway 55 miles per hour. They jam the transmission to a different gear. Well, you know, our newer versions are better than the older King James version. But the Codex, oh, the older Codex. There are much older Codex than there is syndicated and Vaticanus. Number three, Syndicate's manuscript was just the next best thing to chocolate. His Greek manuscript, mostly from Syndicate. So what Tissendorf wrote to us, gave to us, us were them, not me. Here's a humanistic, oldest, chocolately Bible. Has been watered down, erased, omitted, changed, added to suit us, mankind. All right, off Tristan off. French philosopher Voltaire. Woo. I got him wrote. You gotta know this this is hilarious. Mr. Voltaire, a philosopher. Woo. Let me get Quote, from Mr. Voltaire, quote, philosopher. This is stuff they teach in colleges. This is stuff they teach in high schools. People go pay to hear these people. Woo. Quote, a hundred years from my death, the Bible will be a museum piece. End of quote. So what he's saying, the Bible is no good. One day, a hundred years after I am dead, that Bible is going to be sitting in a museum dead. Okay? A hundred years after his death, the French Bible Society set up its headquarters in Voltaire's old home in Paris. <laughs> you know what happened a hundred years? Your prophecy, Mr. Voltaire, did not happen. The Bible didn't sit in a museum. It sat in your house and it was printed and it was distributed from your house. Your house became a publish, a Bible publishing and a Bible get it out all over the world. All right, Bible correctors. Ooh.
Proverbs 30, verse 5 and 6. By the way, most of these verses now I'm going to quote have not been changed. Every word of God is pure. He is a shield unto them that put their trust in him. Add thou not to his words. Least he, God, reprove thee, and thou be found a liar. Now he was going on with people like me and others, and Dr. Peter S. Ruckman. We put out stuff that, that attack these people of the new Bible. And it'd be better that you get attacked and you hear me or Dr. Ruckman or the many, many, many others sass you about the modern Bibles and may you correct yourself and may you repent and get right. It'd be rather a human say, hey, listen, you need to get right. You're doing wrong. And repent and get right. Rather, you're standing at the judgment seat of Christ or the great white throne judgment where you are rebuked by God and you can't repent. You can't change. You can't get right. Let's look at these people so upset. We step on their toes, but we do it because we love you. We want you to get right. Not better than God taking you down. Revelation 22, 18 to 19. For I testify unto every man that hears the words of the prophecy of this book, Revelation. If any man shall add unto these, God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book. And if any man shall take away from the words of the book, of this prophecy, Revelation, or it could be the entire Bible. It could be read either or. Prophecy goes all the way back to Genesis 3. God shall take away his part of the book of life. And out of the holy city, New Jerusalem. And from the things that are written in this book. You know what Bible means? Bibulus? It means the book. Holy. You see on the screen over here? It says Holy Bible. It means Holy Book. Holy Book. When it comes to the Word of God. Now listen, I'm going to give you some very hard instruction here. Three of them. Ready? Number one, leave it alone. Number two, hold on, write this down now. Don't add. Number three, don't subtract. Now that don't mean notes. I got notes in my Bible, but I ain't changing it. If I come to a word in the Bible and it's like, you know what? I'm not going to remember what that word means. I'll look it up in the Webster's 1828 Dictionary. I'll write somewhere on that page. I'll write the definition. I ain't changing it. I ain't adding to it. I'm just further expanding knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. And it's possible to lose your soul by what Revelation says. It leads, it leads Bible correctors and it lost men and women. You know where I stand? I feel anybody who, who goes about to start and corrects the Bible, I don't think they're saved. Why would a saved man go mess with what God says? And God said out of the book of Revelation that anybody take away from the words of this book or this prophecy in a revelation or the whole Bible, I'm not sure which one. He take his part out of the book of life. I'm not going to say it, but it looks like you mess with that Bible, you mess with your salvation. I'm going to walk on very fine line on that one. Deuteronomy 4 2, ye shall not add unto the word which I command you. Neither shall ye diminish aught. Don't add or don't subtract. That you may keep the commandments of the Lord your God, which I commanded. You say, well, that's Jewish. That's Old Testament. Doesn't John tell the Christian, you have commandments? You're to love one another? Doesn't Paul give us all ten commandments but the Sabbath? 
Deuteronomy 1232. What things soever I command you, observe to do it. Does not James say, be you doers of the word, not hearers only? Thou shalt not commit adultery. Oh, that's the Old Testament. That's very fine to keep your hands off someone else's wife. Any age. Listen, before the law happened, there was a man, he had either, he had either Sarah or Rebecca, I forget which one, maybe both. God said, you're touching another man's wife. Well, wait a minute, Lord. Huh? There was no thou shalt not commit adultery. And yet it was a sin, and yet it was a law. Before the law. Let me tell you, uh, maybe gross, but you, know, you talk about a woman's menstrual period. And the Bible says, the law says she's to be separate. Everything that touches her and everything that she touches is unclean. All right, when you got some of these island nations in the Pacific, never heard of the Bible, don't know anything about Jesus, don't know anything about Moses and the law, and I know a missionary that went over there, and over there in those island nations, they got huts specifically designed for the women in their menstrual period. You get your period, you go over that hut, you stay over that hut till you're done. They don't have the, the biblical law. They don't have the Levitical law. They don't have the law of Moses. Paul says the law is described in our hearts. Us dumb Gentiles. We, we didn't have the law, but we knew if a man killed another man, he's to be executed. Except for modern America. People that claim to be saved will try to uproot you and your belief in what? The King James. They will try to get you away from God. The Catholic Church puts God on a shelf with the popes. Even the Pope himself being called the Eternal Father. Jesus Christ. The Jehovah Witnesses will have you to believe that a Jesus that's not God. The Muslims will have you to be Jesus was a good teacher. The Mormons would have you that Jesus and Lucifer were brothers. Service to God in Jesus Christ. Calvinism. Well, God elected you to be saved. God didn't elect you to be saved. So you don't need to go out knocking on doors. You don't need to go passing out gospel tracts. Because God has already saved that person or damned that person. COVID-19. Well, just close the church house, 60 and all that. See, you know, we can't go to the church house, but we can go to Walmart. During the COVID-19, there were a couple times we, we went to the Chinese restaurant. Now, we couldn't eat at the Chinese restaurant. We had to bring it home, but still, we were around people. There are people who didn't go to church and hadn't gone to church. I've been in a church where there's a track rack. Nobody took any tracks. And the Bible, the Word of God, the main tack is the tack on the King James Bible. I've been attacked on that one in a church. I've been attacked with the service. Uh, you know, this is stupid going out there preaching on the street and, 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 and screaming. And that's Christians who told me. That's funny because Jesus preached on the street. The apostles preached on the street. Early American history had street preachers. Benjamin Franklin wrote about a street preacher. Early American newspapers printed sermons of messages that were preached on Sunday. Boy, we come a long way. They also have they don't believe it. 
and they want you also not to believe. And that involves history. We're, we're going to rewrite history because it's against our race. It's against our people. And you're to believe it too. I don't know what sex I am. You're to believe it too. No, 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 no. You come up to me, oh, I don't know what sex I am. And I respectfully say, drop your drawers. All right. If you got a penis, you're a male. If you don't have a penis, you're a female. That's end of discussion. Oh, no, 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 no. I would lock you up. There's a day and age of non biblically Christian non biblical Christianity. You got the charismatics that they're taking the Bible out of proportion. They're taking it out of context so they can have their whoopee do. Healing and healers. And if there is a Bible, you it's got to be the modern perversion. Their music programs, their music style. Hey, we can't go with the old traditional hymns no more. We got to liven it up. I heard a guy the other day in music. Oh, yeah, we're going to take this, this hymn that's 100 years old. Oh, and we're going to put a little upbeat to it. That doesn't please God. That pleases the flesh. Social activity. We want to go to the museum, but we don't want to go knocking on doors. The denominal creeds. We're Baptists, we're Presbyterians, we're Catholics, we're... If we were all Christians, and we're not, are we not to be together? We're not all Christians. We follow this person. We follow this thing. We follow that. We follow this. Political and historic to, to legends of fallen men. Oh, you know, the Republicans are going to save us. Robert E. Lee was a great man. My grandma, my grandpa, my grandparents before them. We've always done it. We always will do it. Or just anything but the Word of God. <laughs> you say whatever you want to say as long as it's not the Word of God. That's your school system. Show and tell. Whatever you got for us. Oh, what's that, Billy? Now, this is my sister's, my, my sister's index finger I cut off today. Ooh, ah. What do you got, Fred? I got this dead cat that was just hit by a car today. Ooh, ah. What do you got, Sam? I got a Bible. Oh. Go to the principal office. Sally, what are you doing at the lunch day? I'm saying my prayers before I you arrest her. Timmy, what are you doing? I'm facing towards Mecca and you say, good boy. You know what amazes me? Anything but the Bible. We went to the bookstore over here in Daytona Beach. Books a lot. And they got a lot of books. And I told my daughter she can go pick out two books she likes. You know what's amazing that there were many sections of books about murderers and criminals. Ted Bundy, um, what's his name? Delta Scout, I can't think of his name now. And others. Right there on the table as you're walking by, here's a life story bio of murders and criminals. And one table of Bibles. And very few of them were King James. And then the other nonsense and garbage out there. Many churches vote for what the Bible says, yay or nay, on issues. 
Everybody going to vote for this family into this church as big women. If that family is saved and believed in the Lord Jesus Christ, they are in the body of Christ, no matter what you say. And we were in one church, the second church that we ever been in. And they brought us in, and he, man, he opened our family, everything up. And then it was a while, we're sitting there in this other family that, you know, were clicks, still clicks. And everybody who, who thinks this family raised their hand, and I raised my hand, because I don't know. And the pastor looked at me in front of everybody, you're not a member of this church. I was newly saved. I was saved, but, you know, never been taught, never been trained. I was a Christian that didn't grow. The person that led me to Christ, all right, now defend yourself. Well, later on, I begin to study, read the Bible. Yeah, I'm a member of Christ because I believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. What gives you the right to say, I can be a member of this church or not be a member of this church? I'm already a member by the blood of Jesus. Many churches, they hear not the Bible. One guy, a Sunday school teacher, he taught things wrong. I said, where did you get that? Well, someone told me. I heard someone say it. Many times. I said, the Bible, and showed him and gave him the chapter and verse. And the next week he come up. Oh, blah, blah, blah. Well, where did you get that? Well, I, I, re I read it somewhere. I got it from the TV. Friend, this is what the Bible says. And he told me one time, I mean, if I was, well, there's only one gospel. Well, gospel of the kingdom, well, the everlasting gospel, the gospel of the, the, blood, the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. Sincere men that adore the Lord go off to school to be trained to be pastors. And for three and above years, their faith in the Word of God, the King James, is challenged and put by the wayside, given to the birds or Satan to devour. In other words, they go into the front doors of these seminaries, institutes, corporations. And they come out with a modern Bible or no Bible and no knowledge, no wisdom, and no understanding of the holy. And they get up in the pulpits and they ruin the faith of the people and deceive them. The average church member doesn't know what a doesn't know what you know now that you've been taught, you know, college. The King James Bible is full of errors. More errors than others. But use the King James because those people out there you're preaching to and teaching, they're, they're dummies. They're just the lay people. You cannot believe the Bible has errors and mistakes when the Bible says the total opposite. You can't get up there and say it but a better rending. That's not what God said. I had a guy this 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 Sunday. Yeah, Sunday. You know, Jesus got on the mule and went off into the city. No, he got on the ass. And when you look up in the great world of, of the internet, like he said, you can look things up. I did. There is a difference. A great difference between an ass and a mule. And I think God, the Holy Spirit, would know because God created the ass and the mule. That the ass is not a mule and a mule is not an ass. You cannot believe the Bible and then state that it is the words of God and the words of man in error. 
And, and you, if you've done any kind of witnessing, this has happened to me. Well, you know, men wrote the Bible. And the same person that will say that will get up in a pulpit or a podium. The Bible says. And when you tell them the King James Bible, you get on the King James Bible platform. Well, this is, you know, men wrote that. So what you got is you got a book, but you don't have a holy book. The Bible claim in these words are his words and not man's. Do not add anything to the ideals of the Bible. Do not add to the fundamentals of the Bible, the creeds of the Bible. Do not add your beliefs. You know what's going to happen this Sunday? And Baptist churches are going to add to Easter. And we're going to call it the Resurrection Sunday. No, Resurrection is Tuesday this year. You're going by the Catholic doctrine and traditions. You're not going by the Hebrew. You're going by the Gentile Catholic calendar. You're not going by the Almighty God, Jehovah, Hebrew calendar. Saved and lost, Catholic or Baptist, whatever, millions of people are going to be deceived on your beliefs on Holy Week. Don't add your church authority. Many Sunday morning they'll get we're glad to be in the Lord's house. I and mean, there's no other Lord's house? You're the only one? And don't add traditions, and that's the Baptist Catholic Church today. It is God that saved and forgave the sins of men, adultery, murder, sexual rebellion, thieves, lies, but not once ever recorded a man that perverted the word of God to receive such a forgiveness in the Bible. Moses was a murderer, and God used him. Moses got angry to a temper, and God used him. David was an adulterer and a murderer, and God used him. Peter denied God, and God used him. Wrote two books. Paul was killing Christians religiously, and God used him. A woman came up to Jesus. Was it four or five husbands? I forget what it was. God said, go sin no more. Eve was a Bible perverter. Where do you read of her forgiveness? Eve's the first one to, to pervert, pervert the Bible. One of the kings in the book of Jeremiah put cut up the word of God and put it in the fire. Where did he end up? He ended up in the fire of hell. Paul wrote about people who were correcting the Bible in his day. Where do you hear them? You don't. The rejection of the authority of the word is eternal damnation for rejecting Jesus Christ, who is the Word, John 1, and 1 John 5, which that verse, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit, that's removed out of modern Bibles. Friend, you remove Jesus Christ, you mess with Jesus Christ, you're not going to be in New Jerusalem, Revelation said. 
the holy city. I'm walking a very fine line here because I am once saved, always saved. But when you deal with Bible correctors, I'm telling you right now, if you are a person in the church and you're sitting in the church and you've got a modern Bible, okay. But if you're a pastor of a church and you have a pulpit, you're using a, a modern trash. I'm not saying you're unsaved, but you're going to lose rewards. One God, one Father, one Spirit, one baptism, 300 Bibles? I don't think so. Salvation is believing in God, it's believing in Jesus Christ, and it's believing in His Word. Go in all the world and preach the gospel. Whosoever hears the word and believeth. You are of God because you got the words. You're not of God because you don't want the words. And I didn't quote that correctly. Alright, we got one more thing. Eusebius. Eusebius. He was hired by Constantine the Great. Now, Constantine is a man that will take your God, will take my God, take, and we'll put our gods together. That's what's happening in the Baptist churches today. This Sunday, you're going to have the, the pagan, Catholic, Egyptian, Assyrian, Babylonian, Estar. And the Baptists are going to give it Easter and Resurrection Sunday. He prepared 50 official Bibles on the finest millennium. Codex form Unicode letters. It was completed in 331 AD. Scholars believe the Codex Vaticanus is one of the 50 Bibles. You mean the ones they, were, they threw in the garbage can and were burning? The Codex in the case was not a direct from the 50 Bibles, but maybe a copy. Xerox, you can call it that. 5,400 plus manuscripts, but two above were chosen for the modern Bible translations. So you get 5,400. And out of those, you choose only two. You get yourself a case of Skittles. And you open them all up. And you got them in a bowl. And all you do is eat all the red ones. And you throw the other colors out. What a waste. You're not getting a full package. The Bibles of the Roman Empire. Oh, here we go. Rome. Use the new capital of Constantinople. Named after Constantine. Money was provided by Constantine. The Bishop of Caesarea was an educated Antioch in Caesarea. The Caesarean school that was founded by Origen. So what you have is you have somebody here from the right place doing the wrong thing. You, you got today the royal the royal family in England. Man, they got the blood. They got the family line. But man, they're all messed up. They're all out of whack. Though they came from the right line, they got out of line. I know you came from Antioch. <laughs> the church history of the ecclesiastical history. Eusebius wrote the first surviving history of the Christian church as an ordered account. You know exactly how it happened. Based on the early sources complete from the period of the apostles to his own epic time. This time stream correlated with the history with the reigns of the Roman emperors. The scope was broad. 
including where the bishops and the other teachers of the church, Christian relations with the Jews, and those deemed heretical, the Christian martyrs through 324 A.D. But, what was his belief? His belief on Jesus Christ was Arrhenian. And as the Jehovah Witnesses, Jesus was not a God. I mean, Jesus was a God, excuse me. But he was not the God. So Jesus would be a small G-O-D. Not learned in Antioch, but Oregon through Philo. So this is not the Antioch teaches. This is not the Antioch ways of the Christians. And this is why the Bibles today, the modern Bibles, remove Lord, Jesus, Christ, God, begotten, and blood. That's why the modern Bibles mess with the, these words and remove these words and remove these verses because the founder, Eusebius, did not believe that Jesus was the God. So following what he believed, his own beliefs, remember we just, we just said that, is put into the modern Bibles that you hold today. It was admired by Oregon. That guy's trouble right there. A collection of writings. So your modern Bibles today holds the ideals, the fundamentals, the creeds, the beliefs, and the authority and the traditions of man and church, but not that of God. And where what they believe cross what God says. It is removed or it is added or is footnoted to align with their beliefs. Any modern Bible out of Alexandria. There you go. And the worst of those Bibles is the New King James. Because it's very, very close to the King James. But it ain't the King James. You gotta be careful.